let's let's jump into um, what is a stock option, and there's two main types that that sort of startups are using ISO and NSO. So let's dig into that a little bit, and you know, let's try and help people understand you know when they would use an ISO, when they would use an NSO, um, and I think we're going to have a little secret for everyone what the best one is. I'm gonna, if you're not going to say it, I'm going to say it at some point along the way because I reckon there's a clear winner there for, for most startups. Yeah. So when I get a startup client um, that comes to me and say, hey, Matt, I want to put an equity incentive plan in place. And basically, we're going to go over the types of options. But um, generally, one of my first questions is, do you want, do you want employees to own your shares? Um, that's that's the one of the very first uh, questions because the tax treatment um, of ISOs, the incentive stock options, the statutory, uh, the qualified options, those require you to meet these holding period rules, which means you've got an employee that actually has to become a shareholder and own the shares. Um, if you have an employee that's not going to, if you don't want your employee to own the shares, for example, say you have a an equity plan that grants stock options. And then basically everyone is all the um, people who own the hold the awards are essentially cashed out on an exit event when the company sold. Um, then an ISO really doesn't you don't really get the tax benefits of an ISO because you're actually not you're not you're not meeting the holding period employees aren't really holding the shares uh, for that period.